just say victory, come on. <laughs> Don't we love when the atmosphere is conducive and ready? <laughs> How many times did you want to stand up and speak already? Right now. So it's right now. So, so it's happening right now. Like right now? Like right now. Like right now. Like it's bubbling up. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Father, we're not here just to hear a good message. We are here for the activation of everything that you have already accomplished this morning. Lord, that these words that are released are released from you and they hit the mark. Hitting the mark, the reality of Holy Spirit. Come in us like never before. Brett has become a dear brother, a Monette. As you know, when we look at each other, like when I look at you, we go somewhere with him. So, Father, thank you for Brett. Thank you for the culmination of the days and the time and the preparation of which he stands in this day. A greater multiplication now greater multiplication now seeing all that you've seen by the spirit become the reality hallelujah know about today, it's going to be a little different. So much has been said already. And if you don't know already, God's just getting us to higher dimensions, but not for our own sake. Right, it's for others. You know, that was uh, Joseph's revelation in the end. Even though when he was young, he saw many things where he was his future. But in the end, he realized it was for others. And that's a good way to look at things. Right, because it takes your eyes off yourself. And it also produces a certain amount of uh, let's just say it makes us less arrogant because <laughs> it's not about us right you know I'm not sure why whole sonship thing has taken us so long to get here you know and like some of you have been here a while watched observed and sometimes I did it just from where you're at sitting right there and just sat sat more sat and sat <laughs> I will say I'm very honored to be up here. And 
and uh, just, you know, as I kind of look back over my own life, it's the Lord had me in several st- different streams. And a lot of times I thought, oh, yeah, this is the stream. We'll just stay right here. And then we go to another stream and a few more streams. But I feel like, for me right now, is those streams are coming together into one. And uh, it's... It's just interesting to watch, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm in it, but I'm also kind of watching at the same time what the Lord's doing. And um, it's uh, sometimes I'm maybe as surprised as you might be. But surprises are good. Because surprises kind of keep your mind out of it. Sometimes I tell the Lord, I said, don't. Prolong too long because my mind gets in it. And that's really the, honestly, that's really the battle of the spirit is to keep your mind in it, off of, out of it, not in it, but off of it or not in it. And I tend to be very analytical, which is not always my friend. Sometimes it is, but not always. Um, One of the things the Lord is doing is he's slowing me down in this particular venue. So if you feel like I'm just staring at you, not saying anything, it's okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm growing, I'm stretching just like you, right? It's good to have that I've not arrived yet mentality. Because it keeps you growing, but it also keeps it fresh. So there's no experts. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be competent in things of the spirit, but which is different than thinking you're an expert, right? And sometimes the Lord will get you comfortable and competent, and then he'll say, okay. Let's go to the next thing, right? That's uncomfortable, and you're not competent. But two things, really, of that I've learned of walking in the Spirit is that hunger is really the, the big thing. The other thing is you have to not care what it looks like. That's a, that's a little tougher. And I, I actually, uh, I had, uh, I'm trying to think where I was, but I was watching TBN, which I don't get that at home, so I was somewhere else. But anyway, he was talking about the Holy Spirit, and as he was talking, he I think he was trying to make them comfortable with the fact that Holy Spirit may not do something unbecoming. Well, he lost me right there. I'm sure he's a good, a good man. He's a good preacher. Um, so you have to just kind of lay that aside. And, I mean, there are things that would trouble me. Like, if you ever read anything about the Smith and the Revival, when it hit, um, he said there were men sort of dancing around, like, doing ballet. <laughs> like, that would trouble me a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to really be in the spirit <laughs> to get that done. But... But the, the joy of it is that a lot of times that doesn't really tell you when you get in the spirit, then he kind of moves you that way. You don't care anymore. 
Right, if I'm sitting there going, oh, she's going to make me go up there and dance ballet or whatever, then I'm probably just going to stay right there, just pass on that. Some of you didn't dance when you were lost, so you're certainly <laughs> having trouble dancing now that you're saved. <laughs> you know, my mother loved to dance, but she grew up in the Baptist church, and I'm not speaking evil of them, but for her, she had to give that up, which was unfortunate. And Religious. <laughs> That's all that was. And I've thought about her. She's passed now, but she never really... The only thing she really knew is that her baby boy, which was me, out of three, was different. <laughs> and she never really got to see things that you have seen. Wow. Um, but that's okay. She sees now, yeah. One of the things the Lord is, I believe the Lord is doing, well, this I know, I should say that more kindly, I know what the Lord is doing. Is it what we're growing and beginning to look like in here, he wants us to be look like out there. Right? This is just, and I don't want to say rehearsal because it makes the things not real, but this is like where we're learning. Right? So that we can be these people out there. So this is where we're going to go today. Right after the Last Supper, before Jesus went to the cross, in the book of John, he gave them three chapters of instructions, basically how to live without him. I mean, the physical him. In fact, if all you had in your life was those three chapters, you could successfully live the Christian life just on, that's 14, 15, and 16, if you're wondering, in John. You could live in 14, 15, and 16 if that's all you had, and you could be successful. You could navigate successfully the Christian life. Because he basically gave them everything that they needed without him, the physical him. And he said so many things, but first... After he said, I'm leaving, he said, I'm going to send you another. And the word there to another, it can be of the same kind or similar kind. And I've heard mostly said the same kind, but I kind of like the similar because the Holy Spirit does function in many ways differently than Jesus did in the earth. But he's similar in that. He's part of the Trinity. <laughs> He's part of the gang, part of the group. Then he called him the paraclete. And I say that word because there's so many varieties of that word. Some translations, like the New King James' is helper, some are advocate, some are comforter, and some others. And all those are true. All those are encompassed in that word. But the word is actually made up in Greek of two words. And I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to tell you, get something across to you. <laughs> One word is to call or called. The other is alongside. So at Pericles, he says, he is the one who is called alongside you. Now, Jesus would later give a little more definition of that and say he will also be in you but I think it's important that we understand that idea that he's called alongside us. Because sometimes we think, oh, the Holy Spirit is just doing everything. That's not really true. He's alongside you, 
and he's trying to get you to do stuff. It's like, so he comes alongside to help you get it done. So a lot of times when I'm sitting back there and I, when I come in, I'm always like, Lord, what are you doing? What are you saying? And I'm listing them, what comes through other people, worship, whatever. And then a lot of times at some point I'll get promptings. And I don't always get words. I, a lot of times I get more promptings than I do words. And then when the prompting comes, it's like, then I'm trying to navigate, okay, where does it fit? And I'm just trying to relate what's going on with me. It's occasionally, people are, are looking over there, what's going on with Brett? Um, <laughs> and I see you looking at me. It's okay. It, it doesn't bother me. I just, I just know that. But So then, anyway, just a looking for how to navigate that and step into that. So my point is that he's just called alongside us to help us navigate stepping into whatever is God's doing, right? And if he can do it with me, he can do it with you. And some of that's just part of the journey. So he said one called alongside called him the paraclete. And then his primary description for the spirit was he was the spirit of truth. Before he ever even actually called him the Holy Spirit, he said, this, another, this paraclete, he is the spirit of truth. So wherever he's leading you, he is leading you into Truth. And truth is what? Truth is really the door into the re- God's realities. It is the door into the heavenly realities. If we're walking in truth, then we're moving in heaven's realities. So if you ever wonder whether the Spirit's taking us or you, he's taking you into truth. He's taking you into the reality of heaven. Now, if you remember, how many of y'all know what the first piece of armor is in Ephesians? And you all, everybody's thinking, I see their brains going. It's actually the belt of truth. Yeah, the belt of truth is the very first piece of armor. And the, the first three pieces of armor are all preparation. That, what, you do those beforehand. Like, you don't wait till you're in the battle. Like, oh, I got, get my belt on and... <laughs> right? So on our common day, our belt holds our pants up, right? For most of us, I don't know if that's... So get that belt of truth on so you can get caught with your pants down. There you go. <laughs> well, that works for you. I'll let you... So truth. Then he said he would teach us all things. And he would bring to remembrance everything that he had taught them. Now, if you're going to have something come back into remembrance... It helps that you spent some time in what it is that you're supposed to remember. You all follow me? All right. So if you don't know what Jesus said, then, I mean, give this Holy Spirit something to work with. And I'm being very practical, I think I am, trying to be. Like, let's spend some time in the Word. I mean, a lot of the things the Spirit gives me, it's just right out of the Word. Because I've been there since I was 17. Now, I worked... 40-hour job, so it's not like I was in it 24 hours a day, but I was in it as much as I could. So give him something to bring to remembrance. But then he also said, I, I'm gonna, he'll teach you all things. 
Because he, Jesus said later, so there's a lot of things I can't tell you right now because you can't bear them. In other words, you can't hold up under them in order to, to be effectual in your life. Right? And John said that if everything that was recorded that Jesus did or said, there would not be enough books to contain it. Now, don't feel like I'm saying the Bible, the, the uniqueness of the Bible is that there's enough there that you can judge anything else that comes. So everything that comes that may not be directly, I judge it by the word. So, right, we judge prophecy by what? The word. We have enough in there. Even though we don't have everything, we have enough to judge whatever else the Holy Spirit might say. That's not necessarily directly quoted from there. All right, everybody good with that? So the really big thing in these chapters, because you have to think about these guys who had been with Jesus for three years, had the physical Jesus, which obviously we none of us have had. And by the way, Jesus said, blessed are you who have not seen but believe. So you're more blessed than they are because they saw. Some of you know, said, oh, I wish I was back there. Well, okay. But actually, Jesus said, you're more blessed that you hadn't seen. Just be encouraged. So they had had him for three years, and now he's telling them they're going to go away, or he's going to go away. But he tells them, he said, it's to your advantage that I'm leaving. And in, in a nutshell, it's like, if I don't go, the Spirit doesn't come. So I'm going to try to illustrate this. Anthony, you going to help me with this? I'm going to tell this funny story. Well, I'm going to, you're going to be my illustration, but I'm going to tell a funny story about Anthony. So. <laughs> so I, um, when I was working for Right Now Roofing, I went to the office, and I think Lori had just started. So she, you know, we, I saw her there, and she had told Anthony that she had seen me. And Anthony said something about me floating in. <laughs> and I know he's kind of playing, I think, but I don't float, really. I'm just a normal person, just like you, Monday through Friday or Saturday or whatever. <laughs> so let me show you when, so you're going to be Jesus. You okay to be Jesus today? No pressure? I'm a little bit. <laughs> well, you really just have to stand here. but So when Jesus was in the earth physically, right, and he said this, he said, I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. I speak the words my Father is saying, and he does the works. So the disciples are with him those three and a half years. So everything that they know of the Spirit emulated from the physical Jesus, right? Because the, the Spirit had not been, yet been giving, and they were familiar with it because they had been around him, right? So the whole of their experience was just from being around him, from being in proximity. And as long as he was here, and some of you would know this probably just from some of your life experiences. As long as he was here, what would their tendency be to do? They would always defer to him. Now, he did send them out with a certain measure of authority. And I wouldn't, don't have any way to prove this, but, you know, how far away would they have to get before they were no longer, could operate, like how much proximity So there was a limitation that they had with him being here. And something else he said then, after he said the Father was in me, I'm in the Father. He said the Father's in me, and I am in you. So well, this is what's coming, 
after the Spirit comes, it's like the Father is in me, but I will be in you. So when he ascended, if you can ascend and go right there. <laughs> yeah, give him a hand. <laughs> so when he ascended, when the Spirit had come, then now they were, the Spirit was within them. They were no longer dependent on the proximity of just being around him. And so there was a multiplication factor. I know Scott's talked about this in the natural. But there was a multiplication factor that came with the outpouring of the Spirit. Something that he could have never done if he had physically remained in the earth. So now, you get to be Jesus. Yes, I understand we're a body, we're Jesus as a whole. But I need you to see yourself. And John said that in his letter. He said, as he is, so are we in the earth. So you have to see yourself as being able to operate the way that Jesus did. And he said that. Did he not say that? He said, you do the same works that I'll do. I heard that. <laughs> she said, he'll do greater works. <laughs> yeah, then he said that next. And I know that get, getting your mind around that one, and I've heard Mary Beth mention that. And she, the, the day she got that dimension word. And it is, it's like mentally... But if he said it, it was true. But my understanding is that where I, the revelation that we need is the one he had that he understood the Father does the works. I mean, he said, he said, I, didn't, I don't operate out of my own authority. Well, that's a wild statement. He said, I basically speak the words that the Lord's telling me, or the Father's telling me, and then the Father does the works. So let's go back to that practicality. When you're sitting in your seat, and you get a word that you know didn't come out of you. So somewhere, you look for the opportunity to get that word out of your mouth. 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 And then let the Father do the works. I always know what the Father's doing. I know what he's saying first. And then when I get that out of my mouth and get out there, then I just watch the works of the Father. What he's doing. Man, if we could get that out there. That's all right. We're going to work on it in here first. We're going to do a little on, onboarding, I guess. I don't know if that would be accurate or not, but it's onboarding. I've been in the secular world for a long time, so I have all these crossover terms that, that I use. <laughs> but the Father does the works. And so you can, once you step into it, that's the hard part. Once you can step into it. Then you just watch the Father. And it doesn't always look the same. And I think just, I don't know that I really need to say this, but I'm going to say it. It's like, let whatever manifestation, let the Father determine that. Like, we think it has to look a certain way, right? But why? 
I don't know, I get bored easy. So it's like, <laughs> I'm always looking for the new stuff. And that can be, that can be a ditch too, don't misunderstand me, but. I mean, sometimes I, I thought, well, Lord, you could have done more there. <laughs> I'm just being honest. And sometimes it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even see that one coming. Neither did Anthony. But <laughs> I shouldn't pick on him. I'd make too many references there. But. You know, the funny thing is, is that when I first got here, I felt like the Lord had me sneaking up on her very from behind. And somebody y'all didn't really know me, so it just helped you probably keep your mind out of it. <laughs> I'm just trying to be real here or honest or something, but <laughs> I'm hoping that I don't have to sneak up on you anymore. Yes. But we do need to be, not get hung up on who it is that's praying for us. Yeah. No. I'll let just about anybody pray for me unless, you know, I'm getting a really bad vibe about it. But we have to be very, you know, careful about judging things like that. Or thinking, oh, so and so needs needs to be that person praying for me. You don't know who has your healing or your deliverance in your hands. And honestly, the rest of that is just pride. That's really all it is. Tracy would be so proud. I didn't even use my notes today. Y'all don't know. Tracy will tell me later. Said, "Man, I'm so glad when you did your iPad stopped working." <laughs> said, "Thanks, Tracy. I think." <laughs> well, anyway, The Lord always starts with where we are. And really, he'll only give you as much as you want. I tend to be a little bit greedy. <laughs> Somebody said, that. I was going to choose a different word. That was the word that came to mind, but, I was gonna, but since you said it. All right, and even when I was in my 30s, I had a, a class in the guy was got up. I forget why he was what he's talking about, but he said, "You know, I think of bread. I just think of the word more." It's like <clears throat> I don't know. Why, I can't tell you why I'm that way, but yeah, it's like more, 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 Lord. And a lot of times, the years I sat and there wasn't more. It was just again back to that, you know, sitting. The hunger was still there, but usually he'd give me just enough that I wouldn't quit. And those whatever you want to call them, wilderness years, or Steve talks about them. So really, in my, as I'm thinking here, I think, what would it take to jumpstart you? And I know some of you are, know how to move the spirit, but and for you, it's like, what would it take to get you to another level? Well, let's start with the jump start, folks, first. <laughs> like, what would it take to jump start you? Anybody ever jump started a car? Takes a good battery, right, to jumpstart a bad one. I don't think y'all, maybe you're just running low. I'll just say you're running low because I don't want anybody to feel like they're a dead battery. I don't think there's any of those in here. <laughs> a lot of condemnation to that one, so we'll stay away from that. So 
some of the jumps start with just you seeing yourself beyond where you're at right now. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. And stop saying, I can't be like that person. Some of you don't really know. You know what you see, but you may not really know. I'm not talking about anybody in here. I'm talking about those people out there. No, I'm kidding. But sometimes I think, oh, somebody could really misinterpret that, so I don't want you to do that. But, but you have to get your eyes off other people. You know, you just have to stop. I mean, most of my battle, even when I come in this room, is just to take my, is not, you know, get blinders on. I guess that's the best way to say it. Sometimes it takes a while for me. I get a lot of just pushback. For some reason, I get more pushback if I'm scheduled to speak than I do, even though I can move in the spirit just on any Sunday, but um, I get a lot of pushback. But, you know, when you get pushback, you just push back. <laughs> and you just keep pushing. And a lot of times the Lord will use the body. That's the favorite part I like, really, is that something, you know, I'll be sitting here, and sometimes it takes a little longer, and it's like, okay, Lord, it's going to be a good day or a bad day. <laughs> but the Lord always comes through. I mean, you just have to just stay with it. But something will happen, and it's like, oh, there it is. What about you all who have been in the spirit for a while? What would it take you to get you to the next place? And if you're good with your at, the, the Lord will let you stay there. He doesn't love you any less. You're not going to hell because you didn't go, because you stay where you are. So it's really not about that. Religion might tell you that it was about that, but. But the Lord said that. He said, you can have as much as you want. In fact, he said, whatever it is that you measure, will be measured back to you. Let me give this one more thing. Jesus said, at, when the Spirit comes, and then he would say, he said two things. He says, after the Spirit comes, or when the Spirit comes, things would happen. And he would say, in that day. Yeah. Right, it's in 13, 14, 15, 16. In that day. So one of the things he said is that up to this point, you had not asked anything in my name. Which I thought, that's in the end of 16. I thought, oh. That's interesting. He said, but in that day, you will ask the Father, you will ask the Father, and he even said this. He said, I'm not saying that I'm going to pray and ask the Father for you. You're going to ask the Father. So he said, you in that day, you will ask the Father. And you'll ask in my name. Which, thank you, Scott, for that. Not to take away, sure, awesome too, but when you hit that name thing, it was a big shift for me anyway. In fact, I was in that little room back there, and I heard you sing, and I was like, I came out. It's like, wait, <laughs> there's something there. It's for me anyway. But. So he established a relationship by his leaving with you and the Father. And there was one statement he said that I'd just been chewing on for about three weeks. 
He said, if you love me, you would rejoice that I was leaving because the Father is greater. I was like, there's something there. Something big. This is how I, re- this is how I stare the word. As I get something, like, mm, something big there. Something big. If you love me, you'd rejoice that I'm leaving. Because the Father is greater. So this is what I understand. That when Jesus ascended at that by that time he had what he had opened up the heavenlies he had access when he's in the earth he had access to the father but they only had access to the father through him physically when he was here physically so he's saying is that if i go i'm going to open up an access for you Directly to the Father. And he said, the Father is greater. He's a, you know how many times he used that word greater? Greater works, greater Father. The Father's greater. He said, no one born of woman was greater than John the Baptist. But then what did he say? He said, but the least, the least, the least of those in the kingdom will be greater. Yeah. So we've got to lift our... Right? Tran- transformation is always preceded by revelation. Yeah. That's just the way it works. So get a revelation... That because of what he did, you now have a direct access to the Father. That he opened that up. And yeah, you ask in his name. But he said the Father's going to be glorified in the Son. So it all works together. Like, we're not taking Jesus out of the picture. But we're trying to get the Father expressed through Jesus in the earth. Right? God said he was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And we have that ministry of reconciliation. And if you read the whole book of John, in summary, he was trying to show them the Father. And poor Philip, yeah, show us the Father. I'm good. Jesus is like, I've been you with him three and a half years. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah, come on. All right. Let's see if we can land this plane somewhere. I didn't dump the water on myself here. All right. All right, let's go with that activation thing. I like that. A lot. See, we're really talking about full sonship, right? I mean, we talk about sonship, but we're talking about full sonship. Because sonship, you understand, is what? Father. Sonship is father. Sonship is father. Sonship is father. Sonship is father. Hebrews said it, bringing many sons. Jesus did what he did to bring many sons sons to glory. Sonship is father. Why do you think the enemy works so hard to mess up our things with our earthly father? Because because there's so much power in the sonship. 
of the revelation of fathership. You can't have that sonship without the revelation of fathership. A son, a son of the almighty God. Boy, if we could walk with that. A son. You know, Jesus didn't get in trouble until he started saying he was the son of God. It is. They didn't really get bothered till, till that, till he said he was a son. Do you dare say you are a son, daughter? But as Mary Beth clarified, that's it's all tied together there. I mean, Paul said there's no male and female in Jesus, no Greek, no Jew. Now there are obviously distinctions. got to step into sonship. And at the same time, I know God's doing that. So I, I don't, I have confidence. I don't, I'm not fearful. It's not going to happen. But I want you to see it. To be a son. Be a son, to be a son. You know, in the genealogy of Jesus, there was only two people who were called sons of God. One was Adam, and one was Jesus. Now, Jesus was the only begotten son, right? Because Adam was what? He was created from dust, so he wasn't begotten. You all know what begotten means, right? <laughs> it's a good, good King James word. Yeah, he was the only begotten because he was born of woman, but he was, the Holy Spirit came upon her, so he was the only begotten. But now, he wants to make you a son. You know, that was really the, the promise that he was after. And we talk about all the things that Jesus did, which are all true, what he did for the world, but he was really after sons for the father. That's really what all tied up into the promise of the Holy Spirit was to get you to be a son. So I'm, today I'm declaring sonship. 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 Yeah. I'm going to say the word. We'll let the Father do the work. Sonship. Yeah. Sonship. Yeah, he's not done yet. Sonship. Sonship. See, the glory is tied to the sonship. Yeah. Glory is tied to the sonship. <laughs> I can step into sonship. I can step into glory. And when I step into glory, then I do the work that he does. I do the works that he does. When I step into sonship, I step into glory.
pours it out so freely and so fully without measure without measure without measure she has a body we can get it without measure part of that because we, we need each other but without as a body we can have it without measure without measure as a body we can have it without measure see I need you we need each other because together we can have it without measure a dream right there. I've dreamed about that since I was 30. Not me, the church. <laughs> the church. The church. Elizabeth, come up here. trying to have a baby. I keep getting just bits and pieces of that. I don't know what's been said to you before. I'm sure it's all true. this, but just don't perverse it. He's going to put a seed in you from this man right here.
Lord wants to show something forth out of you all. And I don't know how to say this exactly, but it'll be something where others can enter in. I adore you both, right? So don't misunderstand. But they'll say, wow. That can happen to them. That can happen to me. I don't want you to feel diminished. I want you just. fertility over you. Jesus. I hope you're wanting more than one. conception either. <laughs> Mary, that's why that's why Sarah laughed. She said, oh, am I going to have pleasure again? I know. Y'all just hang with me. <laughs> it's a good place to keep your mind out of it. It's so perverse and, you know, it's out there. <laughs> but you know, the funny thing that we don't talk about is after that, you know, shortly, some, at some point, Sarah, you know, passed on. Abraham had other wives and other children. So there was a, what do you call that? A residual effect? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So I just tell you that you might want to get ready. Abraham, it wasn't one and done. So, anyway. I love you guys. Yeah, it's like, you know, when Mary Beth called you out earlier, I just, it's just, all right, Lord, just tell me when. got the prophecy of John. He said from his birth he'd be filled with the Spirit. There'll be something extraordinary from the birth. From the birth.
spiritual verse you're waiting on. Spiritual verse, you wait. Is anybody else trying to get pregnant here? I just want to check. Oh. <laughs> He's going to pass on that anointing, I guess. just agreeing with what God's doing here. I just, I love babies. I, we had six of them. <laughs> organs get, get in line function as you were created in Jesus name whatever the enemy meant for evil God is going to turn it for good and I don't know your story Laureate don't need to Down up for 38 years. We're not going 38 years. We're going to fix this today.
Double it up, Lord. Double it up. Double it up. Double it. Double it. Double it. Team, would you take double? Would you take double? Somebody told you you couldn't do it, just as a lie. It's just a lie. 